I'll just be your fellow for right now. I'm gonna just call a game when he joins, just leave. That's what I told him. Just so we get the party started. It's already bad enough we started so late because of that last game. Welcome to this cool, moderate night over here in Virginia Tech, Hokie Land at Lane Stadium, as they take on their opposing team, Texas Tech's Red Raiders. No, they do not have Patrick Mahomes. No, they do not have any of those players. Texas Tech is the expansion team that had high hopes in the beginning, and uh, Virginia Tech had probably one of the most transfer out teams here. I'm here with Canes temporarily till J-Mac comes. What do you think about this game tonight, Canes? The Virginia, Virginia Tech, Tech Hokies has lined, lined up for the kickoff. For the kickoff. Number, Number 24, 24, deep to return. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Texas Tech um, came out hot out the womb this season and, you know, had some mishaps playing against some good teams as we see the uh, defense coordinator, Jay Breeze Jr., there take the uh, kick return. Uh, but uh, this is the first week I personally, as we see the I formation there, get stopped real quick. Uh, Geno McFly is one of those better running backs, um, in, in my opinion. But back to Virginia Tech, this is the first week I actually – predicted them to win and it's it's because I see the heart is out on the line there for Virginia Tech they don't hear me talking Call it a gain of six yards. well as uh, you guys don't hear Kane's talking I'm gonna go ahead and keep going as we have the tight end to the left of the formation sends him out wide into the slot but back in he's seen something he didn't like steps back gets it right to the person in motion there to get about 15 uh, yards uh, Gino McFly there like I said one of their stud players outside of uh, Dick Dickey I, I know it's Richard Dickey but Dick Dickey sounds better uh, as we get the completion there let me know if the mic starts uh, working here, if they hear you. But uh, here we come with a heavy set formation. ISO, fullback to the right, two wide receivers to the left. Run right up that A gap and gets hit by 58 and then stopped by uh, 74 there. Uh, I don't have the roster up, and my apologies there. As I Hello. do know some of these players, I just don't want to incorrectly uh, name them. Under center here as Texas Tech is seemingly liking that because this is the That's good for a game of two yards. That makes it second and eight. Sorry about that, JJ. It's alright. That was a weird mishap we had here in the booth. After the shotgun formation, the Gino McFly, uh, he reminds me and some others of uh, a brewer. Kind of can do it all. He can catch, he can run, he can block. And here we are with that tight formation again. Iso to the left side gets stopped rather quickly again, having cash there as fast as he could uh, to get his first tackle for a loss. All right, apparently they can hear me now, so... Perfect, perfect, good. So now that I'm done talking, no, I'm just joking. You Under center here is Dick Dickey with the tight end to the right of the formation. They send a heavy blitz and he throws across his body to absolutely nobody. The Hokies are uh, hoping for some kind of hope tonight. Yeah, they, uh, I like the idea of, you know, right now they're having to throw the ball, but you know, they need to get in situations where they can keep giving the ball to Geno McFly. I mean, the dude has ran for yeah. over 500 yards in two games. Yeah, I mean, as uh, Drew Stowe gets his first completion, two completions there by uh, Dick Dickey, um, and the kick is up, and it is good. Texas Tech comes out with three points against Virginia Tech. The biggest thing we've noticed against Virginia Tech is their defense, in my opinion. So uh, hopefully their offense here can put up some points and uh, give some hope as we see a great kick return there by Wardell Mims for 29 yards. 
Yeah, new kick returner there for Virginia Tech, so not a bad return. And as you said, you know, Virginia Tech's got to keep this close. They've had a couple of games here recently where they they played TCU, they played Arizona State, and just got demolished. Yes. It did have, they do have a tough schedule, a tough division, as Jaden Williamson gets his first reception for eight yards there. Um, I didn't know that Mims is a new... I know we've been cracking down on the uh, ghosts here, which is great to help the league and help the players in the locker room. Because we see a fun formation here, but gets absolutely annihilated by Jason Matos. I'm oh, sorry, not by Jason Matos, by Ikojo Naslo. Ikojo? I think it's Ikej. I think people just put letters together when they make their kids' names nowadays. Probably. <laughs> As we see him in the shotgun formation, uh, tight end to his right, keeps in the block, gets the uh, simple catch to Jadis Wilson, Jaden Williamson there for not a first down, but uh, definitely put some yards up there. And this is what I did notice too when I watched their games. Uh, they uh, Their quarterback likes to throw lateral opposed to longitudinal. I'm not saying all the time, but I've, I've called a few games I've played against this team, and um, I think the, they need to risk it for the biscuit here halfway through the season. Yeah, absolutely. You got nothing to lose right now. You're sitting 0-5. Really, both teams, I mean, they neither one of them have yeah. nothing to lose right now. Um, but, I mean, they're going to the workhorse here, Geno McFly. I mean, this is a good strategy. They know what he can do. But maybe for Texas Tech, like you said, they could kind of start using some new plays here and new strategies. No, I like I like the strategy. I mean, they they still got a chance that they could get an outside shot at the playoffs. And oh, yeah. if you have to ride Geno McFly all the way to the playoffs, then you do it because he's proven the last two weeks that he can carry the workload. They just need to put yeah. points on the board now because at 500, uh, 500 plus yards in two games, but you only have two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. You gotta finish I mean, the drive. Uh, yeah, fi I was just gonna say that, and that's why they got a field goal last drive. Not saying that's why, but the three points is great when you're winning. It's not great when you're losing as much as they have been this season. As we see, uh, trips to the right there, gets it right in the middle, and drops the ball there. Um, unfortunate drop because that was a first down. Yeah, um, the passing game has just been so sketchy for Texas Tech. You know, Dickey has not looked good. And then yeah. there he, he makes a great pass and the receiver just doesn't catch it. And, and there we go with a uh, two-step drop down to uh, his second reception there for Drew Stowe. Uh, settling for a field goal here. 54 uh, Very two. long field goal. Yeah. So let's see if the uh, Hokie Nation can shake the ground there to make it an incomplete field goal. I mean, that's great there. Great news. Maybe a momentum shift here for Virginia Tech's offense. Had the distance barely just missed it to the to the right. What's the wind here tonight? I didn't actually check it. What it's was it? It's calm. Oh, wow. Well, here we go. Looks like they sent a blitz right up the middle there, and it does get through, but he gets the throw off for an incompletion. Uh, very unfortunate situation for Jason to yeah, not Jason get that. Jason came in, you know, he, he wasn't the starter to start the season against Oregon State, but has since taken over, and, I mean, he just hasn't looked comfortable back there in the pocket at all. I mean, this is a rebuild organization. You see a great screen there by Tyler Jones for 22 yards. Um, I mean, it seems like everybody's just willing to do what it takes to help to make the move and, and move forward and, and – Right now, this is this is like where you go. Hey guys, I appreciate you in the locker room, and uh, here's Jason stepping up as you know. And I I thought he was another. He was a running back, no? Which one? Uh, the quarterback, Jason Matos. Matos. No, 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 no. He just decided to take a running back number. As we see a great sack there by that Texas Tech defense, they do have a lot of good players there. As Rick Lacy, one of their better uh, front seven there. They got uh, Jay Breeze Jr. Also, uh, my man Jamal Adams uh, Jr. They have a great uh, DB field and uh, up front also. Yeah, I mean, the step DBs are probably the strong up. point of their defense. Definitely. But when um, you're, you're, you're uh, losing, 
it's tough to say, hey man, we're we're still in this. We got some core guys because you know cancer is unfortunately in locker rooms and. You're doing a great job, and so are other people. As clutch grab gets that reception there, possibly in field goal position. Let's see. As they're going for it on fourth and five, you, you spoke not too soon as you said you got nothing to lose. Uh, just go for it. Being in no man's land, you kind of have to here. They're going to air it out. Ooh. Wow. Did you see that wide receiver number 23 on the far right there? He wide, was wide open. open. Yes. I know. Uh, great defense there by uh, Spencer to get the incompletion. Uh, I respect the offensive play call there. Like you said, it's a no man's line. Do we kick it and possibly do what they did, or do we uh, just far fetch it? I don't think Matias went through his reads, or else he'd have saw no. his man down. The it seems like it was line. predetermined who he was going to. As we see a nice run to the outside that gets rather quickly sucked up there for a tackle for a loss by Nick Morgan. His first tackle of the game is a good tackle. And Joshua Bolton, I agree with you, man. You were wide open. That was an easy touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, we seen it, and I'm like, oh, shit, that's who we should throw to. I guess not, but it was probably a predetermined read by him and his boy as we see this tight end here going motion to the right-hand side. Paying, he steps back. Uh, Matias enough Green. money over there. <laughs> Drew Stowe gets a six-yard reception. Uh, three receptions on the night out of his four. Uh, they need to find some other people, but I guess when they're dropping balls, uh, someone's got to be... Uh, well, Drew Stowe, you mentioned, you know, he's got the three receptions. He is actually a uh, new, new wide receiver for Texas Tech this week. That is crazy. So we got uh, Mims doing that great kick return. We got great catches well, over Mim here. Mims by has Stowe. been there. He just recently this week got promoted up to kick returner. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it paid off on Virginia Tech, and so has Stowe, the uh, new uh, players. And I have seen the Virginia Tech lose a few players, but maybe this is what they needed. They needed some new faces in the locker room. Yeah, and there's probably more coming. <laughs> As we see a run for three yards by Tyler Jones. Uh, quiet already. I was about to say, I, I've seen him run a lot more, but uh, tonight only three yards with only two minutes left in the game. I mean, in the quarter. My apologies, not the game. Yeah, doing his yards <laughs> out of the backfield and catching the ball. What a we see a nice curl right there, uh, curl route to uh, clutch grab. That's his second reception tonight. Beautiful play to expose that defense underneath. And then, you know, the little trickery on the curl, just a, uh, you know, fake one way, went back the other way. If he'd have kept going the original way, he wouldn't have got the first down. Yeah. A couple tight ends to the left there, throws it across to uh, his wide receiver for an incompletion. But, I mean, looking at Virginia Tech, it seems like as much as you can sit there and say they're in shambles, they're actually not doing bad against this Texas Tech one-win team. They're not a one-win team if you put them against some of these other teams. I like their uh, playbook. Uh, if you don't mind, what is Virginia Tech's playbook? As they, I know they've changed it. I'm pretty sure they're running UNLV. Okay, okay, that explains a lot. I don't know much about that book. Yeah, I mean, that that is like a multiple offense, I believe, but I could be wrong off the top of my head. Maybe a read options. We see almost an interception there by Marco but great job there by the Texas Tech uh, <laughs> defense DB field with two minutes left here. Uh, Virginia Tech is not saucing up yards uh, at all. I mean, they're getting a few good two, three plays, and then nothing. But we'll see what Texas Tech has in hand here as Virginia Tech's defense has been holding them to only three points, but not really much prettiness, sacks or interceptions, a few tackles for a loss. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this has just been a back-and-forth defensive game to start. Yes, as we see a run right up the middle and gets blown up there very quickly by number 54 and cleaned up by Michael Rory, his fourth tackle and his first for a loss tonight uh, by the head coach. And coming into the night, Texas Tech was a 13-and-a-half point favorite against Virginia Tech. That could still happen, but that's... That's actually pretty freaking high as we see an almost tackle for a loss to finally be taken down by the whole Hokie defense. Uh, Jack Davenport to get credited with the uh, tackle there. Ever since that first drive, Virginia Tech's been keying on McFly. He, yeah. They're going to make Dickey beat him with his arm. 
It seems like it's uh, what they're trying to go through as we see him throw deep left over to, uh, I mean, I don't know why he even dove. That ball was so overthrown. <laughs> yeah, and then he dove into the Virginia Tech defender. <laughs> but uh, great defense there by Virginia Tech as we see the punt go rather to about 40 yards and get almost to the 50-yard line there. Great kick return there by Mims. Uh, same amount of plays nearly, same amount of yards nearly. Obviously, it makes sense because this is going to be their time to even out all those plays and yards. Matt, if you wanted to call pass interference, it would have been pass interference on your receiver, diving into the defender. <laughs> For real. That would have been offensive pass. And that was a great blitz there as it ends up by number 19 coming on the right side, that blind side, Twerky Dingleberry, the best name in the league. Let's see, the tight end was supposed to block him, and then he just said... Him. Oh, my God. And they kept the running back in the block. And he watched you know, as well. I, I, I've talked to a lot of players that are wide receivers and running backs and tight ends, and they're like, oh, my catch is perfect. I don't need to upgrade anymore. I'm like, did you upgrade your blocking? Because that's a very important part in some of these playbooks. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at Oh, my at, God. Um, the defender ran right by the running back. To, uh, look at Jones there, for Tulane. You know, he just goes out there. He probably gets, you know, two, three, four catches a game, but he goes out there and he blocks. Yeah, Last year's that's Tank a very, very, winner. you know, I, I know it's hard to get, oh, my God, as they throw an interception inside the 30-yard line and gets returned. That dude is huge to morning. be in coverage. Yeah. yeah, I would say that we need to, uh, that's, isn't he a linebacker? Yeah, I was about to say, well, maybe he's a weak side heavy linebacker. I don't know. But, uh, great interception. It seems like, uh quarterback here is having a hard time going to the right side uh I, I think they you know are doing well right that drive and, and then just that happens you see a run there you know it's five for five yards uh first quarter is about to end here texas tech seems like you know they got a hold of this game but virginia tech I, with their offense that i've been watching their uh trickery i could see them getting that one big play Right now, the way it's going, that's all it's going to take is that one big play. Is Dickie's going to run it here? That was a great. I don't know if that was a designed run, but either way, it worked out phenomenal with the great blocking there. Last play Trips to the left. Or not Dickie. I thought we were going to get that too. Uh, great first half, uh, first quarter. Um, by Texas Tech, and and honestly, give credit where credit is due. Is Virginia Tech uh, technically almost one of the worst teams in the league? Unfortunately, uh, giving themselves something to pride on here, because if they win this game, I mean, they can easily go from 17 to 14. As you see the handoff there to the left side and by none knew. other than Geno McFly. Now, we've seen them hold them to two field goals here. It's not unobtainable for Virginia Tech's defense to stop them here. They need to get back to what they were doing in the, after that first drive, and that's, you know, containing McFly. Yeah. Cannot give him I mean, they break. took him out of the game that second uh, part of the first quarter. Three wide receivers to the left-hand side. Fakes the handoff to Juno McFly. Takes the run and gets tackled uh, for after a five-yard run there. Clean tackle. Uh, great, uh, great. I love the fact that Dick Dickey is actually a running quarterback. Yeah, Jack Davenport doing a great, or Jack Davenport Jr. with the great Junior. tackle. Yeah, I said that earlier too. And great slam play by their transfer here Prince from UTSA for 10 yards. That makes it first and goal. And here we go with the goal line offense. Two tight ends to the right-hand side. Iso, fullback and everything. Hands it off right to the middle. And gets pushed right through. Gino McFreakin' Fly back to the future as he eats. Yeah, great job on McFly. Kept them legs going. And as yep. a halfback, that's what you're always taught to do. Just keep driving them legs. And that's what he did and pushed his way into the end zone. If uh, that linebacker pretty much got him held up there, you know, almost like an Oklahoma drill. But, you know, we know who won it. If if you were to stop him there, I mean, it could have been a different uh, play. But here we are with uh, Mims taking the kick return here, getting it measly to pass the 20-yard uh, line. Uh, Virginia Tech, what, what, what do you think they do here? They run, they throw, they option. What do you think is going to work? 
honestly, they have this whole season. They haven't found an identity yet. They can't yeah. be consistent in the passing game. They can't be consistent in the running game. As we see a nice uh, slant there. Oh, that wasn't a slant. My apologies. That was to the uh, running back, but uh, uh, on the in route to the middle. Six for thirteen, barely above fifty percent. Uh, this this guy you said wasn't a quarterback. Um, what he is a quarterback or wasn't a quarterback? What's can you give me he some background? Was, he just wasn't the starter. Started. The starter ghosted, so he came in as a replacement. And he was just somebody sitting on our wait list, is what it was. Yep. Well, I mean, kudos to him and getting this opportunity to start for Virginia Tech. And unfortunately, they're not doing great. But step in and, and, and do what he's been doing. Uh, I, I really hope that he's helping the team because right now he's taking licks against this Texas Tech defense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he he's thrown, he's finally thrown for over a thousand yards, but you know, five touchdowns, yeah. eight interceptions. That's that's not winning yeah. football right there. But again, if you're a freshman, you're kind of the uh, walk-on running uh, quarterback at this point. Uh, he he kind of got thrown into the fire, and he's working with what he has. Yeah, definitely. And this is a big third down here. Three wide receivers to the left hand side. Tight end, tight right. Tight end and running back both go out. Uh, I'm not mad at that throw because that could have easily been an interception. But uh, hopefully they get good defensive field position here with seven minutes left here. Yeah, if uh, if you're not if your guy's not going to catch it, you got to keep it away from the defenders. Yeah. As we see a nice stop there by the uh, punt team to not and Jamal Adams is known to get good return yards so for them to stop them inside the 30 yard line here is big for Virginia Tech's defense. Yeah good open field tackle by Thomas Noble the second. Oh Thomas Noble the good Thomas Noble wow that was a great that I mean this is humiliating is this a funeral Michael Rory just literally said nobody touched him he just stood there waiting for the great option and waited for the running back. Or a uh, blocking audible by the quarterback there, our offensive lines. We see Gino McFly again. They're, they, they're back to where they were. They're, they're like, okay, uh, we got to get him out of here. Yeah, that was uh, Brandon Burns held him up for, uh, I didn't see who came and cleaned it up, but Brandon Burns was the initial hit on him. Yeah, and those guys are, if not, oh my God, that could have been something pretty. That was number five there on the defense. Was that Mims? Yes. Wow, good for him, man. I mean, these guys have, uh, you know, I haven't called one Virginia Tech team. I've watched a few, but uh, it's good to see these guys come off the bench and come from, you know, no man's land to do kick returns, get almost interceptions, you know, throw the football. They're inside. The, uh, they can get inside the 50-yard line here. They have a chance to get this field goal possibly before half. That would be huge. Yeah, they need to get some points on the board. A uh, good screenplay there to uh, Jackson Rodriguez on his second reception. Yeah, finding the, the most experienced player on this offense. I mean, everybody's a freshman besides Treshawn Jenkins and Rodriguez, and Jenkins is a sophomore, so you get the uh, only Was Rodriguez one of uh, – not to get off subject, but was Rodriguez one of – players that stayed from last season he as is. Tommy Salami. I love Tommy Salami. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Jackson Rodriguez stayed. He went, He was at, you know, Lake Texcoco and then stayed at there with Virginia Tech and has been there the whole time. Nice. Well, that's good to see him get involved here to hopefully help be a veteran of the team as we see a great run there by Jason. Um, he's ran six times. I feel like he really has a ball, but sometimes they count those. Never mind. But uh, Bingo's runs and... yeah, yeah, I forgot. But it looked like he looked like a smooth runner there as he gets the completion to Jaden Williamson, who hasn't seen the ball since the first quarter. Getting him involved. Yeah, great little throw to Williamson there, and Virginia Tech's got something going. Yeah, slowly but surely, as they send uh, Williamson in motion here to the left side. They got tight end left, throws him for the fake pitch, and he does actually do the pitch and gets very quickly stopped there by Breeze. Oh, that was Adams. My pal. I always get you guys confused. Adams, Breeze, uh, Ricky, Laney, you know, whatever. Sorry. 
It would have been nice to have a little bit more blocking on that. Yeah, because it was, or, I mean, you're a running back. Make a play. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tyler Jones. I'm not trying to rip into you right now. I know you guys are having an off season. My apologies. Great play there by uh, Ricky Lane, who I just uh, announced. But uh, Texas Tech's defense has been doing this. I've seen them get blown out, but in those blowouts, I've seen some big plays where I'm like, they're not this bad. <laughs> I'm like, uh, so to see them, you know, take advantage of this Virginia Tech team is probably nice to see uh, being a uh, Texas Tech Red Raider tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're sitting on, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They got 12 freshmen. Yep. The only senior on this team would be Richard Dickey. I just saw a flag. Personal foul. Oh, shoot. Wow. That gets wiped away real quick. They had about a 15 yard run to the left side there, but got a clipping by uh, none other their transfer there, Julian. The drag queen, Prince Poppycock. <laughs> And uh, back to first and 11 here. Uh, Rick Ricky knows what he's doing as he steps back under center, looks to his left, gets it to, to Simon Soft Hands. Simon the Soft Hands did not get the first down, though. Where's the effort, Soft Hands? They got yeah, four he, defensive he linemen. should have had the first down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, gets off the blocker rather quickly there. That was a beautiful play by Maddox Cash. This is his second nice play, uh, big play tonight. Stop Gino McFly, who's nearing the century mark at 72 yards. Yeah, great job there. You know, keeps them, you know, from second and inches to third and one, and now a chance to potentially get off the field. They send Stowe right side motion, gets it to Stowe for the completion there. Oh, sorry, my apologies. That was Chris Lee, the tight end, for his first reception of the game. I, I'm, I'm messed up on the team sometimes. You know, yeah, that'd be their tight end, Chris Lee. Yeah, he's rather. I've seen him active in the um, channels, uh, but uh, great play for him to finally get involved. But. You know, you look at his size, he's definitely a blocking tight end, in my opinion, talking about blocking. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> Probably why Gino McFly has as good of games as he does. We see the fake handoff there and gets it to none other than the Mr. Lee. Eating them hamburgers. <laughs> There's already no wrong with a hamburger on a Thursday night. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go with the tight day. formation. Right up the A gap, designed to go on the strong side, but took his own counter up the middle there for a second and seven. Second and two, with under three minutes left here. Virginia Tech needs something, and they need something now. As we see the handoff there, and gets something as I asked for the Madden God, I mean the Sim God by Trayvon Wright to get a tackle for a loss there. Great job by the safety coming up and making the play. You know, uh, the linebacker slowed him down, and then Trayvon Wright come in and cleaned it up. A gang of Hokies definitely took care of that. As that's what it usually takes to get uh, Gino McFly down. As uh, Dick Dickey looks to the right, gets the completion there to none other than Chris Lee for his third reception on this drive. His only three receptions of this drive. Yeah, Chris of this Lee game, my apology. Turning into the go-to man and. It looked like they had a guy out of place out there in coverage, and I think that's what messed it up a little bit. Well, Chris Lee stayed in the block that time as they sent him a motion to the right-hand side for almost that much-needed by Noble interception. That's what they need. They need a sack, a fumble. They need some momentum here, Virginia Tech. As we see a great blitz there to the right side to take care of Geno McFly for zero yards. Brandon yeah, Burns like they had him in the backfield. Mm-hmm. He's still uh, at 84 yards, having a good game. You know, they are putting it on your back. And there he goes. He sends everybody out there wide, and he gets the great completion there. Rich Dickey did not get that completion. He threw it where it needed to be. Oh, it's incomplete. I thought that was a I, yes, and and. 
That is wild. As uh, there's a minute and 45 seconds left, the field goal is long, it and again. it is no good. And Matt, you cannot blame it on the wind in this game because the wind is calm mm -hmm. in Blacksburg. As we talked about, yeah, that's why I asked earlier. I'm like, oh, is there a wind? And you, you said no. But Virginia Hokies right now need to do something right now. I don't care if it's three points or 20 points. We we'll see it down to their check down for a loss. Texas Tech, I mean, Virginia Tech calls the, uh, I'm getting confused because one's Texas Tech and the other's Virginia Tech <laughs> as these Tech teams uh, get the time out there. Drops it back, throws it right to the corner out to nothing. 50% completion tonight by uh, John Mat Mateos. Yeah, that was, he was hit as soon as he was releasing that ball, so. Uh -huh. Here he goes, he steps back, looks like there's no blitz, throws it to the left-hand side pass. to get the completion there! And oh, he fumbled. Oh, what? But I think no. he was down on that one. Thank you. Review that play, because my man caught that ball and fell down on purpose. Was that Rodriguez? No, that is, uh, I believe it was Thomas LeClaire, the freshman, yes. Wow, that was his first catch-all game then. The previous play is under review. Good review. Let's see. It's oh, down. Definitely down. 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 Hey, great play by the freshman there. Great tackle for effort. But, unfortunately, Virginia Tech is going to win this, in my opinion. Otherwise, uh, there's a minute and 30 seconds left for Virginia Tech. Kill the clock, run the ball, get some points. What a drag. That is... Wait, I'm so confused. Anyways, here we go. <laughs> Plays good. Steps back to uh, hopefully get another completion, but does not. Staying at that 50%, you got to believe that Tyler Jones here has to get some of the ball. He has to get some love. You're inside the field goal position, possibly. I don't know. I, I say to stay away from him. Go to Thomas McClair. Go to... Oh, wide open. Jackson Rodriguez. You are right. I am wrong. I was about to I will... mention him, and then he was wide open. I know. I, you called that one, so my apologies. That's why I'm not an offense coordinator. Uh, as we see him step back with trips to the left, has a lot of curl routes, runs the ball himself. John Mateos gets that first rushing touchdown tonight for his team to open up the offense. Great job by the Hokies. Yeah, great drive there by Virginia Tech. You know, even despite the, you know, possible fumble that didn't happen, you yeah, know, that was a great drive. You know, I think the other thing I gotta sit here and say is, did they leave too much time on the clock? Probably not, because Virginia Tech's defense has been handling business all night. Yeah, I agree. With one minute and eight seconds left, they're gonna get the ball inside uh, the uh, goal line there for a good 26 yard gain by the, is Breeze a corner? I believe he is, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um. Well, here we go with uh, Dick Dickey, tight end to the left-hand side under center. Steps back on a two-yard drop to nothing. Uh, someone was miscued there. Yeah, uh, not sure what happened there. Dickey just didn't look comfortable, got rid of the ball. <laughs> I mean, the Jaheim running back has more yards. like Jaheim now. <laughs> As we see, he get to his check down for a few yards. There's a flag on the play. And that's coming Hopefully, back to uh, Personal foul. Yeah, they need to get rid of these uh, penalties. Clipping needs to go away. I think we need to exit. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Still second down. I, I, but that's a question for another day here in the organization. 57 seconds left. Second and 22. Gino McFly is having a great game with average uh, over 80 yards. Tight end Chris Lee to the left of the, th the line. Steps oh, back. Gets sacked. And that was noble. He's had an almost interception. He's had a tackle for a loss and now a, a sack. I Seven mean, this guy is the so player of the game. the game. Yeah, I mean, he right now is having the game of his life because he needs this game. Third and 32, Virginia, Virginia Tech does not call a timeout, unfortunately, which is not great coaching. They only have one left. They're trying to save it. I, I suppose. I would have saved it for that. Man in motion, goes to the right-hand side, gets tackled, Ooh, calls the timeout here. But I guess you're right. Either or, they had to use it then or there. Davin, uh, Jax Davenport Jr. gets the seventh tackle. 
Coming from his own end zone, he should have. And they're going to be in field goal range, dude. Oh, bro. They're going to be in field goal oh. range, dude. They are right. I mean, this is. I would just bring out our kicker right now. I'm yeah, sorry. Four seconds left. I don't take a chance. And here they go, as we called it. From 40 Virginia to 49. Text. Let's see what happens here. Up and it's up. up. And it's good. good. And it's good. Virginia Tech gets 10 points within 10 seconds of the end of the half. Um, great game by Virginia Tech. Texas Tech uh, definitely slumped off here rather quickly. Oh, uh, no. They had a great return. <laughs> and he does break it free. And that just shows the emotion. I was about to say, they can't forget there was one second. You can't give him a chance to return it. <laughs> Uh, we got ourselves a game here. I don't care what the, the, the rankings are because, as you know, it's halfway through the season. Both these teams could potentially make last seed playoffs. And what Despite is the, the rankings? Uh, I mean, it's one loss for, or one win to no wins. I mean, they could be one spot yeah. or ten spots. It don't matter. Yeah, I mean, and, and as you know, last season, uh, ECU, which was my team, we started off 0 and 5, came back and uh, won and, and, and won 5 and. Uh, six and made the playoffs. So this is, uh, you know, for the high hopers and the optimistic people, it's not inevitable. This could happen to either team. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm going to be real with you. Virginia Tech's run game, we see it's not doing much. But if we can get Mateos to keep throwing that ball, maybe run the ball a little bit more, get the ball out of Dick Dickey's hand, and let's just put it in Geno's hand because Geno McFly is the offense, and I have no disrespect to the wide receivers there at Texas Tech. It just seems like Virginia Tech's defense is taking care of business. Yep, definitely. And, you know, Virginia Tech, a lot of them passing yards, probably half of them came on that next to last drive where they got the touchdown. Yeah. Um, they've shut down Geno McFly here Texas for the first Tech half after that first call. drive, so. Back to and and the best part is, is that they're home. They get the ball at half. This is where they can say no. They this have is our. The this is our. Yep. This is our team. This is our field. These are my fans. We'll, we'll see what uh, John Mateos does here as he has his tight end to the right side. Two wide receivers up tight right. Runs the ball. Gets sacked immediately by that dominating Texas Tech. Hamburglar, his first tackle of the game. That is crazy and usually has a great game. So kudos to the Hokies offensive line. Yeah, you said Twerky Dingleberry is the best name, but I, I like Tanuki Hamburglar as well. <laughs> Dingleberry is fun. I mean, they're, I, I, had, I, I did one of these games earlier, and I felt like their team has the weirdest, wildest names. They and I, I really blame Jamal Adams for that. He tells everybody, just make it hard. As we see a screenplay to get dominated there. Replayed by the uh, Texas Tech defense. I, I, now they're going back to what they were doing early on in the game instead of doing what got them to a tie game there at the end of the end of the half. Yeah. Rick Laney is one of the uh, underseen players on uh, Texas Tech's defense. And as we see a screen Ooh. again to the right side. No reason. This is a uh, punt. This is a I, I, I don't understand that. Your your offense was doing very well, but I, for Virginia Tech, uh, we need to have a conversation after this game. Yeah, that was close because you had the corner blitz coming as well. Yes. Yeah, I saw that on the outside there, and I'm, and I'm confused. But Thomas Noble with another punt return tackle. <laughs> he is uh, Mr. Virginia Tech right now. Now, is he a freshman too? Yes. His brother okay. was at Arizona State, was second all elite last year as a defensive tackle, and now he's a freshman corner. Well, I, I, the Noble family, I'm very, uh, I know them very, very well, so uh, kudos to the Nobles. As we see the Hokies here with four down linemen, they send uh, Stowe in, I mean, uh, wide receiver in <laughs> for me. Oh my god. And Gino does what Gino's done. Yeah, that was a, that was a great run. They huge hole over there on the right side, and Gino gets over the century mark. 
Four down, four down. 26, Mike. 26, Mike. It brings up a first and ten here for Richard Dickey. Richard Dickey hands it off to the left side to Gino, but gets. Uh, it seems like Virginia Tech is rather quick on picking up on Gino McFly's uh, run. It's like, oh, he ran. Oh yeah, we forgot about him. Yeah, I mean, for about five or ten carries in a row, they could shut him down. But then there's that one. Like, oh my God, he was running with him. He was on his back. That was. <laughs> uh, great play there. He has 123 yards, averaging almost five yards a carry with one touchdown. This is the Geno show as we see a lot of blocking formation here and hands it off to the strong side to get annihilated by that defense there. Uh, I have to sit here and say that this is probably the best drive that they've been consistent on because they're like, oh yeah, we, we got to use Geno. Gotcha. Not Two sure tight ends to the right. Gino gets the ball. Gino breaks through. Gino trips over his own shoelaces. Does not get the touchdown. So he picks up the first down. His first and goal from inside the three. Six minutes and change here. Left tight ends to the right. One wide receiver to the left. As they give it to the fullback, Android they get 18. nowhere. Android 18. I. I think that name is funny. I don't even know what it's from. It's I, I just think it's funny because it's funny. As we got two tight ends to the life fullback again. They are committed to this fullback run up the middle. J Mac, you make it in? I made it in. Well, finally J Mac is coming after the game is over. <laughs> Texas Tech 17, Virginia Tech 10 points, 6 minutes left in the game. Uh, Canes, we'll, we'll be seeing you soon as J-Mac's taken over. Uh, J-Mac, uh, I don't know what you've missed, but you've, you, you, you've seen a very... Uh, this has been a very close game, all game. Yeah, uh, I haven't caught nothing. I was putting my baby to sleep. It all looks right. like it's a close game. Yeah, I mean, to, to gather you up here as we see uh, John Mateo step back and get a three-yard catch to Williamson. What's happened is pretty much first half, uh, Texas Tech was up 10-0. Uh, Virginia Tech's defense did pretty well. Their offense didn't do very well. Um, and then in the last few minutes of the second quarter, as we see a screen play there, great screen play for almost a first down, uh, Virginia Tech decided to show up and say, hey, Scored a touchdown, got a field goal, tied the game, and here we are. In the uh, second half here, as Mateos gets absolutely nowhere on that unfortunate third down. I just saw that graphic, one for eight on third downs. Now they're one for nine. That's, I mean, the score is in one possession, but it's um, not recipe for success. Yeah, uh, Virginia Tech's offense, let's just put this out there, uh, has not in anything besides subtitle. Their defense has by far played a big part. <clears throat> As we see Rich Dickey here under center, two tight ends to his right. Sends one tight end to the left hand side. Steps back, drops, look to his left, gets that slant round, almost undercut there by uh, the defense. Simon Softhand's only a second catch. Yeah, every, every time Richard Dickey step back to throw a pass, everyone holds their breath. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and here we go, Rich Dickey. Looks like there's going to be a blitz coming, and it came, and that is really... This is what they've been doing all game. Uh, Carl Patrick, I haven't called his name all game, as you can see by his stats. Um, great tackle for a loss there, but it's been... Very lackluster offense, but Geno McFly, the running back on Texas Tech, has gone over 100 yards and a few touchdowns. Yeah, um, this is probably like my third Texas Tech game I, I've called, and um, every game Geno McFly oh, yeah. shows up to, shows up to play. He's um, last game I mentioned he's going to be the first one back with a thousand rush attempts and a thousand yards. He <laughs> he runs the ball a lot. I mean, for obvious reasons, you know. I mean, they're they're thick and thin through him, and I'm okay with it. But when your record's one and uh, you know five, as we see an interception, this is why Gino gets the ball 
But great interception there by Virginia Tech's linebacker, Brandon Burns, four tackles, one interception. I think he had a deflection earlier too, so great job by this Hokies defense. As I was telling you, this Hokies defense is the one who has literally been keeping him in the game. No disrespect to the Hokies offense. So yeah, they uh, Texas Tech. I mean, surprise is um, they're one and four on the season. I agree. Because they have they have a good defense and uh, Geno McFly. They even have a decent best. offense. They just haven't figured it out. Well, they have they have a good offense outside of the quarterback. <laughs> yes. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they, the Geno McFly is one of, definitely one of the better running backs in the league. So yeah. We're looking at their record, one and four doesn't do them justice. But it makes it justifiable for Virginia Tech to come in here and finally get their first win. As we did see this week, we did see a few upsets. We saw Rutgers beat Ole Miss. Great job by the Scarlet Knights as we see John Mateos gets the first down there. We also saw ECU lose by two points to the 0-5 San Diego State Aztecs. This is one of those games that we may be seeing the the same thing here. Uh, and we're coming off of Fresno State beating previous un, un, unbeaten ECU. Exactly. So we can go and talk about the winning teams. Now, is that going to start changing? And, and great job and kudos to Fresno by winning that game. Uh, kind of had that game in the bag most of the time watching it. But uh, TCU is still not a team that you want to mess with. Uh, I still, you know, talking about rankings, you know, I've always said App State's probably a little bit better, but TCU unfortunately hasn't had a loss, and here it goes tonight by Fresno. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's not an upset, but to me, but Arkansas uh, yeah, did Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Tulane. Tulane. Arkansas did beat Tulane Great. this week as well. Great play there by uh, Jason Mateos to uh, strive for that first down. No slow gets his 11th tackle there. But uh, back to other games in the season, Fresno, there's two teams that uh, I've been talking about lately is Fresno and Arkansas are one of those teams that worry me if you play against them or if you see them in the playoffs. Those two teams right there are, I, that's just me. I'm just saying that, I'm not saying App isn't great or ASU isn't great, but those two teams I feel like can slide in there and if, if they can, they will do something, as we see a six reception by Rodriguez there. Uh, yeah, it's Virginia Tech is moving the ball down the field and uh, prime, or at least to put on uh, field goal position. So hopefully, great check oh, look, there. great. Yeah, the first down, uh, was the first and goal? Uh, it should be, but no. Apparently, they can get a first down here. Yeah, they're just outside. But yeah, Arkansas, by like being ranked number seven, I think it was too low. They're definitely a top mm -hmm. five. Team, top five. Oh, did you touchdown. see the pitch there to get the touchdown by Thomas Leclaire? Thomas Leclaire has not seen the ball at all today. Uh, yeah. I and I think he had one catch. But I mean, this is great. The trickery, and I said that earlier. They played the Nevada offense, which is like that multiple option, and I said you weren't here earlier and I wish you were but I told Keynes and said I could see them coming back or winning by a trickery play not that the game's over with a minute and 30 in third yep yeah um, Nevada is one of those playbooks um, you know it's a lot of big hoopla to it um, yeah. it's how, how good it runs but um, it's a just a tricky playbook to master <laughs> the uh, and who was I talking to? oh it's Keynes um, we have said that, oh my god, Gino got annihilated there by Rory, the head coach's third, to, every hit he has, I feel like tonight, has wanted to call an ambulance. Oh, a little correction, this UNLV playbook to be specific. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, that's another. Wow, Texas Tech's offense throws another interception there, and Virginia holds the cane to victory, or at least taking the lead there, as Dick Dickey is reminding me of a girl I know over at ECU and throws interceptions a lot, Chris the Mats. You guys friends? You guys doing the same playbook? <laughs> 
the with the Dicky um, turnovers late, um, the past two turnovers is is a double negative, you know, in a yeah. word because you're, you're turning the ball over on your side of the fifty. So it's a yeah, um, that's even worse. You're right. I mean, any interception sucks, but when you're throwing it on your side, it definitely makes it feel. It's a, I I like to call that when I used to play football, a free three. Yeah, you know, hey, it's a free three right there. So. Um, here we go as they step back. John Mateos gets the. Oh my God! I thought that was in completion there. Yeah, uh, if, if your your receiver can't get it, no one can get it. The way he threw that ball. Now, uh, as we were saying earlier about other teams, as we see the tight end go in motion from left to right here, two wide receivers to his right gets a screenplay off, gets blown up almost, but uh, still almost gets to the goal line. Uh, they're going to settle for a field goal here. This will be the first time all game, almost going into the fourth quarter, where Virginia Tech takes the lead. If they get the, the field goal, if they get it. you gotta, you got to remember, this is a simulated game. You know, I wish we had a little statistician on the side because I wonder if this is Virginia Tech's first lead going into the fourth quarter all season. You know what? We need to call our boy Canes. Canes, can you wire in and go check back on those box scores and tell us if this is the first time all season Virginia Tech has possibly had the lead and get back to us there? Oh, well. I mean, well, Oregon State is the only team they have gone into fourth quarter and led but still lost to. So hopefully that's not an omen as we see uh, – Dick Dickey come out here in the shotgun formation. Hands off the ball to Gino. It's a few good yards there for eight. That's good for a game. Uh, 140 yards, 4.3. This guy's having a great game as Davin. Uh, Jacks Davenport Jr. has eight tackles on the night. But uh, me and you, J-Mac, we go back to a lot of other leagues as we go into the fourth quarter here. Most importantly, I think I'll give you the honorary say to say what's going on hold up them fours yes sir not one not two not three not but four put your fours up in the chat yeah put those fours up in the chat i got a phone call here hold on guys one second oh good take with the ball it's genomic fly <laughs> oh 40 first down first down uh, texas tech with a running back like Gino, you, you know, it's all about momentum. You want to get him positive yards. And as Gino gets the ball again, my apologies, everybody. That was an important phone call there for work. But uh, Gino is the workhorse here. We see it. We know it. Uh, they just need to keep doing it as Maddox Cash gets his uh, eighth tackle for the night. Yeah, I, yeah, I was, I was saying because you want to get – Gino yard positive yards on first and second down. You don't want to be behind the sti sticks with um with the running game that they uh, Texas Tech have because with you in third and thirteen, third and fourteen, you're not probably going to run it. But Texas Tech is a possibility, but uh, you know eight times out of ten you're not going to run. Um, the other thing is Rick Dickey. Hasn't done many of those tonight. Probably his third one or fifth, I guess. But some of them are counted as, you know, sacks. Um, the offense of Texas Tech has only put up probably um, seven points or so. Their defense has done a lot. But they've also missed, I think, two field goals already. So this game could have been different. This could have been a 23-20 to game. Uh, so even if they get in field goal range with under eight minutes left here, uh, doesn't mean they're going to make the field goal. Well, yeah, that's that's another um, uh, uh, a plot twist to the story because if you can't trust the field goal kicker and you don't yep. trust your quarterback, uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, what, what are you left with? Mm. Geno McFly. As we see him step back there, throw it deep to the right-hand side, one-on-one, -on -one, incomplete, uh, deflected there. The Hokies defense is doing their thing, man. Yeah, and the Hokies offense have stepped up. They are putting um, points on the board. You know, they, they haven't came up with seven, every, you know, every time, but they are, you know, putting positive points on the board every time they step on the field. I, I believe the last... 
two or three possessions. Yeah. You know, Virginia Tech here, I mean, both teams obviously, you know, have all their timeouts with seven minutes, nearing seven minutes here in the shotgun formation. If they can just kill this clock and, and not – oh, my God. I, I, what am I seeing? Yeah, he almost had it. He almost had it. <laughs> Listen, the, the receiver's about to look. Oh, my. he was literally a fingertip away. But a uh, great play there by Rodriguez, not losing his composure and getting that catch. And Mateo is just committed to that play as we near the seven minutes left. I think the most important thing here is the Hokies need to kill the clock, get yards. As we see another one not go the same way as Shane Bright gets his first deflection there. Um, yeah. Oh, Lee hates the pass. But I hate the wide receiver screen pass mm. the most out of any plays. Because that's like an automatic pick six if they get it. It's like, because you, uh, yes, you, you couldn't have said any better. I was just going to say it's always scary watching it. Almost nearing the century mark there, Jackson Rodriguez and eight receptions. I call that a double-double if he gets ten receptions. Anthony Spencer on his fifth tackle there. But um, if they could keep this clock rolling... As Treshawn Jenkins Jr., is his first reception? I think he's a walk-on. I have no idea. I'm probably making that up. But uh, what what do you think? They kill the clock and get points. What are you yeah, thinking here? They, they definitely have to put points on the board because you want you want Texas Tech to go down and have a score a touchdown. He is um, not a walk-on, by the way. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, you want him to score a touchdown. You want them to score a touchdown. Yeah. Um. Their offense is, has been a little predictable. Everything has been like 10 yards or fewer. Yes. I mean, which which has worked, but eventually we've you're going seen, to have to spread the defense. In this drive alone, we've seen four screens, whether it's halfback or wide receiver. And here they go, fourth and two. They're going to go for it. They have literally nothing to lose here. And this is wild. Inside the 40-yard line, pitch play to the left side. Does not break every tackle, unfortunate. That is a crazy play, but I respect what Virginia Tech is trying to do. Yeah, um, you know, even though Virginia Tech is on five, you know, getting being two and three in conference or three and four, three and three in conference, four and three, can stick you into the playoffs. Cause, so they're not totally out of the playoff hunt, but they need division wins to, to just, you know, start a conversation. The uh, only conversation I want to talk to you about is how Texas Tech needs this win almost as bad as Virginia Tech. Now, Texas Tech is probably sitting there as they get that nice completion to soft hands for 18 yards on a first down. Uh, Vir Texas Tech knows in their locker room they're better than this team. They're better than most of the teams they lost to probably. But Virginia Tech also has the heart and the passion of saying, We've lost so many players last season in the transfer portal and during the season this year where they're just hanging on by a thread, hoping to be just as good as Texas Tech. Yeah. Um, and by yeah, good, it, I mean one win. You need that one win for hope, dude. I mean, there's nobody who wants to go on a winless season. Not, not at all. And, you know, that's the, the expression that comes from any given Sunday, yeah. you know, so right now we're in, you know in a given Thursday and if Virginia Tech gets a win, you know I'm not I'm not just saying you know they're going to go on a three game winning streak or whatever yeah, case yeah, may be, yeah. but but it's a big um, uh, morale boost not only for your locker room but for your coaching staff to feel like they're they're doing something right. Just passed 100 yards, so you know in case you're curious. Sorry, no, I'm just joking. And you had the over under on Dicky going 100 yards. As we see, almost an interception by Burns again. But um, no, I agree with what you're saying here. The the as as we're gonna see a very long field goal. That's gonna be about what are we at the uh, and there, dude. That's his third missed field goal. I put that more. I mean, I understand what the coaching staff is doing, but yeah, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your field goal kicker missed two field goals. Yeah, and I I wouldn't yeah. see him out there for that. You know, that's probably no, like a 58, 57 yard field goal. You know, you got Gino. You only need two yards, three yards. Um, but that was, a, it was fourth and nine. So I, they was oh, okay. in a no win. They was in a no win position there. Um, but I definitely want to kick the field goal. 
Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know what to say besides that Virginia Tech here is taking advantage of what they're getting. And here we go with a uh, pass interference play. Uh, that is very unfortunate by... Uh, I think that's a pass interference. Still second down. That's probably like the first time I have ever seen an offensive that pass is, Yeah, that's, that's... Hey, well, here we are. First time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> a pistol offset formation here as Jason uh, Mateos hands off. He runs into his right tackle there. Gets absolutely nowhere and loses the yard. Um, no slow has been all over... Uh, him tonight. Now, earlier in the game, me and uh, Keynes were talking, just, you know, going through our motions, and he even said, like, both these teams, he's like, they could win it out, and they could make the playoffs, and it has happened. It does happen. Um, as uh, me and him were talking earlier, as we see a nice deflection there by Jason Breeze, but last season, my ECU team started off 0 and 5. We wound up finishing 5 and 6 and making the playoffs. Granted, we got blown out in the playoffs, but it's it's doable by Texas Tech here. It's doable by Virginia Tech here to be that last seed team and and, and show up at least and say, hey, for the new recruits, for the new players, or the players that are there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it starts with one. You have to stack wins to yep. um, get to the playoffs. You know, so. If you can get some type of momentum, whether you're Virginia Tech or Texas Tech, um, you can, you know, maybe be a, a hard out for someone, especially like a running back like Geno McFly. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he can consolidate a game because he's running 40 times a game, so he limit your possessions. Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, it starts one win at a time, and right now, before the win, it starts one play at a time. Who wants it more? And Rory has had a phenomenal game with 10 tackles and four for a loss there. Um, who wants it more this game? And in the beginning, I would have said Texas Tech, but as the tide has turned, I'm really believing that that, that Hokie defense has shown up and done what they do. As we see an amazing touchdown there by Julian Papoko. Uh, yeah. I, that's his first touchdown I've seen all season. I don't know how many he has, but it was the most important one I've seen. Uh, hey, Vicky came through because McFly, um, he has to be scaffold yeah. in the second half. So, that Texas um, Tech fan club right now is cheering so loud, and I am all for it because there is not one thing you want to do. You do not want to lose to an 0 and 5 team. I was there this week. I'm all for the uh, winless teams to win but when it's your team it's like a what just happened kind of moment it's a double negative because not only did you lose yes. but you lost to a team that, that haven't won a game you know I mean, it's the, like when the, when the Dolphins yeah very close besides the yards but go ahead go ahead about the Lions Dolphins. was going or Lions and Dolphins was losing all their games and they were like 0-14, 0-15. You, yeah. did, you did not want to be that team that, that let them no. win. No. And, and and it happened. So it's, you know, like, uh, we're not going to sit here and talk about winless teams all night, but you want to see them win, but you also don't want to be the one that lets them win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the way... Down there by Tyler Jones, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah, Virginia Tech, what's important for them here is not to get um, negative yards on first and second down. They have to be in good position in third down because you don't have a, I want to say the offense. Oh, great, great going pass. Great. You don't have the offense to get, um, to overcome, you yeah. know, third and 15, third and 16. Yeah, you know, as you were saying earlier, J Mac, that they don't really have much to lose, but. Right now, I feel like they have all but to lose, and they're sick of losing. And, and this is the first drive I've seen all game, and I know you weren't here for the first half, but they had a lot of mismatch offense where it was 8 yards, negative 2, 10 yards. And here, this is the first drive I've seen uh, a lot of forward passes, a lot of forward runs as we step here. This is a four-down territory, as you know. Yeah, they... um. Yeah, you don't want to give the ball back to Geno McFly because he no. can definitely run the clock. clock out on you. 
Yeah, as we see. Oh, oh my God! This happened one. earlier in the game. <laughs> they had so many drop passes. Fourth and five. Two minutes thirty seconds left. They do have three timeouts now. They are within field goal range. They're not going to do it. They're going to run. Get sacked at the fifty-yard line. All right. So it comes down to Gino McFly <laughs> and uh, Virginia Tech yeah, defense and see if they will get. If they kick a field goal, they get the ball back. Right? We know math. Simple math. Two minutes and thirty-three seconds left. Texas Tech's offense has been lackluster, minus that last bomb drive there. Uh, this Hokie defense needs to do what they've been doing all night with sacks and interceptions. Yeah, As we see the tight end go from left to right here. Ooh, does not run that. the ball. Does not give it to him. It takes the <laughs> sack. Uh, but this is uh, for coaching. Carl Patrick with his first sack of the night had one earlier tackle for a loss, but uh, that sack is bigger than Dick Dickie's dick. So I don't know <laughs> what more to say here. And the offense coordinator definitely getting fired um, <laughs> today. <laughs> that was... I don't know who it is, but Jamal, fire him. Uh, here we go with the uh, ISO formation tight end to the left. Two wide receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Killing the clock here with two minutes and 12 seconds. Play clock at 20 seconds. Second and 19. Virginia Tech holding on to the biggest hope of the Hokies night. Uh, I... I'm going to go out a limb here and say they're going to get the ball back. So, I'm going to go out a limb know. here and say Gino McFly better get the ball here. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, well, you never. Oh, oh, he yeah. Run right outside oh. left, breaks one tackle, gets it for 10 yards still. Third and nine. Nobody, uh, Virginia Tech calls their first timeout. One minute, 47 seconds. 33.3% completion on third down to stop him on fourth and two. Gino McFly is running all over the game, but Thomas Noble, one sack, one tackle for a loss, and almost uh, not allowing that uh, first down there. Here we go. This is it. This is all the boogers you've ever ate in high school. Yeah, 137. Tech at one time. Well, Virginia Tech has one time out, yeah. and they have to score a touchdown. You know, a a field goals out the absolutely right into the right shotgun formation. Audibles to his wide receivers on the right. Steps back, throws it deep to nobody, but respectfully so. I'd rather deep than underneath, so that they don't have to waste their time out. Yeah, absolutely. He, was, I didn't know who he was throwing it to, but um, that man was double <laughs> covered. <laughs> And here we go, almost in your same formation instead of a tight end. They have three wide receivers and gets it almost intercepted three times. Uh, Mateo's, uh, he, he's filling in, and I respect what he's doing. Twin wide receivers to the left and right. And then here we go with a screen play here to the third down. This is well, not, this is yeah, not this a good play football. <laughs> Not, They're 0-3 on fourth down. They got five wide, three wide receivers to the left-hand side. John, uh, Jason Mateos is very upset. Looks back, takes the sack. Game over. Texas Tech goes to the second win. Virginia Tech is still in the winless category. Very unfortunate if you're a Hokie. Yeah, and, um, you know, I know Texas Tech, you know, they're going to be shocked as, just as anyone, but Dick Dickie Dick was the one. <laughs> that, you know, as much people. shit as we gave him, he was the one that really did it. Yeah, so you know, gotta give him uh, his credit. And Gino, yeah, Gino McFly. Um, I don't see them milling out. So had the stats right now. Is that what's going on? Are we just trying to show the uh, faithfulness of Gino McFly as he runs and does not get that first down? But uh, great game by Texas Tech. And a phenomenal game by Virginia Tech's uh, overall team. I know you didn't get to much wa watch much, but I mean this was a great game. Yeah, def definitely exciting. Came down to the last possession. Unfortunately, they didn't gain a yard <laughs> on that possession. I mean, they gained. <laughs> Yo, do they have enough time? No, yeah, no. They're going to score a touchdown. They're definitely. Even if they, I was just thinking, what if they held them? They got a field goal, and I was thinking about clockwise. Yeah, I think they go run up the middle. Yeah. Scores. 
What if they don't score, though? And they do score. <laughs> As Gino McFly has been doing what he's been doing all season. Great yeah. career to this young man. Uh, Texas Tech deserves that win. Virginia Tech slumped over a little too late. Wasn't consistent enough. 37 seconds left. Virginia Tech. What do you do if you're in that locker room? You're you're a Virginia Tech player, hey Mac. You know you've been in some. I know you've been on mostly winning teams. If you're on that losing team in Virginia Tech, what are you doing? Well, I was on Memphis last season, so I have had my it weren't my share. horrible. No, it wasn't horrible, but I was on Memphis last season. Yeah. Exchange was was probably the reason we we was. Oh, I, know. I reached out to you to come play for me, but you just ignored me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but no, no, go ahead. Now you're on this team. What do you what are you doing this week going into the locker room? Um, you know, it, this is one of tough to swallow. I I would say I try to bottle what I showed in the second half. What you 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 made positive yards, um, yeah. and try to you know make that a, a into a whole game. Um, <laughs> I don't you're know mad. who's mad. Just say it. <laughs> say you're mad. Say I'm mad, and, and we need something. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how much involved you are as coaching and, and stuff anymore, but I can tell you, like, uh, from what I've seen, Virginia Tech has had a lot of adversity. Just going into this season, Mike Rory took over the team and had a lot of out transfers, which he probably expected, but. On the flip side, he also has had a lot of inactivity, and he's had these people step up. And this game, for all those people who step up out of nowhere, you guys are, you know, doing what you can with what you have. Yeah, and they have to find a more um, explosive offense. They don't have to, you know, take 60-yard shots down the field, but, you know, at yeah. least 30-yard passes, something like that. Well, I mean, I appreciate you showing up here to help out, J-Mac. Uh, good luck to you. Texas Tech on their second win, and uh, Geno McFly probably be one of the best running backs in the league this year. And Virginia Tech, heads high. You guys will be fine as a Hokie. Appreciate you, Canes, helping out tonight.